afternoon, Deadly Dave here. Um, and today I've brought you an interesting one. Um, yep, that's right. Simon Dan is wrong about microchips anyway. Um, so the most recent video Dan did was on um, just some of the misconceptions around the uh, coronavirus vaccine and the injections as and what is contained in those injections. Now, and is correct that there is nobody tracking you through vaccines and there is no microchips in the vaccines. That's that's not how the vaccines work. He was just wrong about a few of the details. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through in, uh, a little bit of that video. Now I will include the link to Dan's video in the description and there's one or two other links I'm going to mention as well and I'll include those in the description too and you can go check those out if you want. Um, as always, I'm just talking about the uh, technology here that Dan is talking about with the microchips when it comes to any vaccine stuff. I am not a doctor. Don't listen to me. Listen to the experts. So I'm going to talk about microchips. Um, I know about microchips. I have an idea about medicine stuff, but I am not a doctor. So don't listen to me. Cool. Okay, with that being said, let's belt on. And um, it's about, I think we're looking at about uh, six minutes in here. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just play it on. And as we go through, I'll comment on it. And um, I said it's just a couple of minutes of this here. So, okay. Um, hopefully this should play through. Quite a few people state that microchips are being injected into us with the vaccine, which was possibly an idea by Bill Gates. Now, microchips certainly are small enough to fit into the vaccine. No, they are not. Right? <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> Well, it depends on what you mean by fit into the vaccine. If you mean there's a chip small enough to fit into a vial of liquid, then then yes, that is absolutely correct. Like if we are talking about a syringe of some description, so if you have like the likes of a syringe here or something like that, then just quite a bit of a bit of area here, and yes, I can fit chips into that, but I don't think that's what's meant by it. We're talking about a chip that's small enough that you could dissolve in liquid and you wouldn't see it, and that's just not the size chips are. Vaccine. IBM, for example, have made one that is only two nanometers long. However, no, no, they have not. IBM have not made a two nanometer long chip. So, um, the I, I, I spoke to Dan about this in the comments. I mentioned in the comments that he had made a mistake, and he sent me on the article where he got the the thing from. Now, it seems to be a bit of a misreading of the article by Dan, but it's not really Dan's fault. Um, because the article is kind of misleading itself and I suspect the person that wrote the article didn't actually know what they were talking about. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, let's um, let's have a look at the article. So, this is the article here that um, Dan sent me on that he got the information from and it's um, IBM created. Create a microchip of just two nanometers. I mean, uh, that's just wrong. It's not what they've done. You can even see here this picture that they're showing um, here is in fact a processor chip and the processor chip is, is you know contains many many process nodes inside it so they're talking about the technology that IBM has announced that managed to create a tiny microchip of two nanometers no they haven't I'll show you some papers on that in a moment um, but even the article itself here contradicts itself as we go down through it so there's more in the article here you can read that if you want to I'm not really interested in that um, the main part of interest here is that it says IBM says its new processor is capable of holding 50 billion transistors on a chip the size of a fingernail. So first of all, IBM are talking about a processor. So this is going to be their new mobile processor, which will you know, be for the likes of mobile phones and tablets and stuff like that. And processors are very complicated chips in comparison to the much, much simpler chips. And this particular chip is due to be the size of a fingernail. Um, so they're talking about by comparison five nanometer chips was announced in 2007 and may contain only 30 billion transistors so they're talking about here they're going to have 50 billion transistors on the chip the size of the fingernail and those transistors are two nanometers now that's not quite right either i'll show you why that's not the case in a moment um but that's um that's basically where the mistake came from in the article here the chip itself is not two nanometers the chip itself is going to be much larger than that like this particular chip the size of a fingernail um so to give you an idea here, um, if we look at this um, article here, or sorry, this uh, pa paper here, uh, this is published by the DIEEE, and this is talking about the two nanometer uh, benchmarking in FinFETs, and it goes through just the different details here on what a two nanometer process is, and it goes down through all the different details, and you're talking about the gates and stuff here, and if I come over to this particular side guy here, you can see that 
our we're talking about this is our 10 nanometer process built on this architecture our 7 nanometer process built on this architecture 5 which is currently where we are at the moment built on this one and then they're talking about 2.1 down here and maybe IBM's have, have something similar in here but the actual nanometer size is due to the size generally of the gate I think um but it's not not it's just for the actual single transistor with inside it I think it mentions it here somewhere um let me just have a quick look um cell design I did see it here and I've misplaced it now not to worry but needless to say we're talking about a single a single uh transistor that's that's that size now looking at some of the actual RFID chips that people do inject into their bodies at some point this is an RFID chip that you might get injected into your hand or something like this um MC Toon had a chat with a the human cyborg um on the channel there a while back I'll leave links to both of those in the description um, absolutely fantastic chat and this gentleman has uh, some, some of these uh, chips injected in his hand here and here and you can see there this is the type of chip that you'd be talking about um, in injecting into your hand you can see that this you're not hiding this in a vaccine like and the reason this is this size and you can see the windings and the wrappings here is that these chips have to have an antenna so I have here a couple of RFID chips so can I can I possibly display them yeah okay so here is one of the chips and there's in fact an entire antenna around here and this is the actual chip up here which is 0.8 mils by 0.8 mils by 0.2 mils so the actual chip is very very tiny um, i'll try one more time see if i can yeah my, my my camera is just not good enough to focus on it but that little black spot there that's that's your chip and then the rest of this outside here is the antenna and the antenna for these chips is what both um, powers them and does the communication uh, both are done through the antenna lines and the antenna basically receives the power from the uh, communicating device so the device that's talking to it and it then processes that and then uses that power to send a signal back out to the to the device it was talking to as well um so uh that's mainly where those are okay so we don't have we don't have two nanometer chips that's just not a thing it is like there will never be two nanometer chips due to the the laws of physics um i don't like saying never um it's very unlikely um because the size of a silicon atom and the amount of complexity like for a chip to work it has to have communication paths and it has to have you know ways of transferring the information around and switches and, and all of that sort of stuff and these transistors are what are really small but you need to have many of these transistors as was the case with particular ibm chip they are talking about 50 billion of those particular um transistors inside the chip <laughs> how you doing future dave here just said i'd step in uh, i was watching the edited video and i noticed that i'd mentioned um that a uh, silicon atom was too small to allow us to have um chips that are two nanometers wide but i and didn't go into further details and that was bad so i'm gonna cut the video please kick this in here and um and and have my amendment in here so if i go over here and if we have a look um just at the uh, makeup of a silicon atom so silicon is what the, the chips are printed on or printed on, printed on isn't right um they're made from um and um the silicon atom here as you can see has an atomic radius of 10 to minus 10 meters which is 0.1 of a nanometer so the diameter then of a silicon atom is um 20 to the minus or two times 10 to the minus uh, 10 uh, meters so it's 0.2 nanometers which would mean that on a two nanometer process node we would only be able to have 10 silicon atoms wide so if Dan is talking about just literally a two nanometer wide chip then that chip itself can only contain 10 silicon atoms in it. Uh, how do you make it how do you make a chip out of it um so no we don't have two nanometer wide chips and with silicon it's I, I would go close to saying impossible highly unlikely um and i i think we're moving on to use germanium and, and, and stuff like that as well uh, there might be other ways of doing it at a later stage i don't know i'm not a chemist either um but uh currently with um with the, the size of the atom we're not making two nanometer chips okay that's the end of my uh, amendment back to the video all right okay 
So let's carry on. However, when the doses of the vaccine are taken from the vial, I think there's around four doses per vial. How can the administer of the vaccine guarantee that each dose is getting one microchip? Also, you've got to consider the cost of this. Okay, so, so that's actually quite interesting. Um, yeah, so each um, each vaccine isn't, uh, each file isn't created individually. As Dan said, you get the vaccine solution and with the, the needle they can extract certain amounts of it. And yeah, how, how, how would you pick out the particular chip? Now, mind you, if you're talking about two nanometer chips, you could just fill them in there and it could be loads of two nanometer chips and maybe you suck them out, maybe you don't. It could be kind of like the the, the sci-fi nanobot kind of things maybe is, is, is what's in people's heads. Um, so I, I don't know how, how um, feasible that is. But the next point that I just kind of slightly run over. With over 1.9 billion vaccines. You don't have to consider cost. It's not important. And the reason it's not important is, as I said, here is one of my RFID chips here. Here is um, another one just here, another little RFID chip. In fact, you've got this kind of style one here. Now I've drawn on where the antenna would be and I've drawn in the, you know, you'd have your little chip would be here, tiny like this. And I mean, the bigger area you get, the, the greater the read range for the particular chip. Um, so like this, this chip will have a, a smaller read range than this chip because of the, the antenna sizes. And, and then the read range is also dependent on the transmitting device as well. Uh, the read range for these tends to be centimeters. You can get some really high powered devices that will do different, but the, these are not those. These are much, much smaller, much, much lower powered and the transmission range for these is going to be centimeters. So you're not going to be able to send data back to some giant server like that. If you want to send data back to a giant server about people, you use one of these. Um, that's what you send the data back with, or perhaps something like a, a, a smartwatch or something like that. And that's what you're going to use to send your, your data back to some sort of server. You're not going to use one of these little, little sticker chips. That's what they are, they're little sticker chips. Like I could, this one is actually a sticker peel off the back and there's my oh it's much clearer on this one the darker black dot that's that's your chip and then the rest of the silver around the outside that is the um communication and power antenna and as I said, it's just a sticker and you can stick that sticker onto anything and then you can use that these are used to store small amounts of information they generally store um between about i know a couple of bytes 50 to 100 bytes all the way up to you can get some um so like this card one here this will store eight kilobytes which is eight kilobit sorry no it'll store 64 kilobit it's eight kilobytes so this will store eight kilobytes of data so it's, it's quite a lot of data you can store quite a bit of stuff here and you could you, you could make a program on that um but but again that's not the point they're they're not nanometers um and these particular how i got onto this was these particular chips here these ones these are several cent each, like five cent for these, I think, and seven cent for these or something like that. And that's just me as a lay person buying them. So, you know, cost is is not an issue. Um, if you're buying billions of them, then yeah, it's not going to be a huge issue. Also, the particular two nanometers uh, transistors inside this process node, there are 50 billion of them inside in each chip. So they're making 50 billion of those for the price they're going to sell you one particular chip. And those chips are going to sell for. I don't know, I was going to say a couple of bucks, but when they're new, it'll probably be a bit more expensive. You might be talking about anywhere up to 100 euros, 200 euros. I, I, I don't know, but it's it's negligible, absolutely irrelevant to the, to the overall cost. The administration cost of actually doing that or the, the logistics costs will be far, far greater. And as I mentioned earlier on, as we showed in here with the vial, you need to get the um, like it's not just the chip you need. You need everything inside the, the mechanism and all that sort of stuff as well. And as I said, this glass tube ends up making it huge like i mean that's small but it's not invisible small which is what you'd need it to be for two nanometers um and i, th I think that's all um so i'll just run through the rest of the, the thing here and Seems see if there's something so else far and if the powers that be really want to track you with this microchip make no mistake they already can i was actually yeah 100 100 agree with dan here <laughs> if they want to track you they're using the devices you already use. It doesn't even have to be your phone. Um, some people get confused with it sometimes thinking that it's just, just my phone. Your phone helps. Your phone does a lot of the data. It, it, when you walk around with your phone, your phone captures loads of data, starts to profile you. Then you go onto your PC and you log into the, the same Google or Apple account that you have on your phone. And then it goes, oh, well, this PC is related to this phone. So now anything on this PC is fair game for this phone. And they start to marry all the data together. And then they eventually start building a profile on you. And then that data is 
valuable to advertisers who want to sell you specific things. They can know specific things about you. They target the ads specifically at you. Um, and there, there are nefarious, nefarious means for that as well. Like, um, it can be used to influence people's opinions and stuff like that as well. But that's a, a, a whole different topic. Um, but yes, yeah, so if the government wants to track you, they don't need to pay money to make something to track you. They can sell it to you. You will buy their tracking devices because that's what we do. The convenience that comes with all the technology they give us as a result of being able to actually track you. We, we, we give up the tracking. We accept it for the sake of, um, uh, of the conveniences we get to go with it. We emailed a potential schematic for this microchip that's going into the right, vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, look, so there's nothing wrong with the rest of the video. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, just as I said, I'm a big fan of Simon Dance. Um, I very much enjoy his content. It's just he had mentioned this is uh, an important topic, so I just wanted to make sure that um, I corrected the, the mistake he had made there. Um, that's all for now. Um, yeah, see you soon. All right, bye-bye.